Hello friends and welcome to this video on Authentic English and in this video we'll talk about the poem The Spider and the Fly which is a poem by the English poet Mary Hobbit okay published in 1828 so it's a fable it's okay it's a poem that uses animal characters in it okay which have human like qualities the poem is a fable one that was primarily written for children so it was primarily written for children it's written in a very easy manner and i think that no none of you are going to face any trouble understanding it the poem talks about how a spider tricks a fly into its web through the use of flattery greed and seduction okay so what happens in the poem that there are two characters the spider and the fly okay so now the spider wants to eat the fly so the spider wants to you know kind of trick this fly into its web so it uses flattery it uses greed and seduction to trick the fly into its web the fly initially says no no i am not going to come into your web i am not going to come into your web but when the spider you know flatters him a lot flatters this fly a lot the fly finally enters the web of the spider and the spider eats the fly so this is what is told in the poem the fly is enticed by the spider's word words enters its web where ultimately the spider kills the fly so this is what happens that through deception okay by lies and deception and through the use of flattery the spider is able to eat the fly okay the poem is like a warning to the readers to beware of people who use flattery to convince us to do things that shall cause us harm okay so this poem is like a warning to the readers especially the children that they should not pay heed to anybody you know who is flattering them okay somebody is telling you that you look so good you should try this and you should come visit me they might be there to cause you harm okay so this is the main thing of the theme of the poem we are going to go through this poem line by line and uh, there it's going to be clearer okay so let's begin so uh, as i told you earlier the spider is trying to you know bring this fly into its web so that it can eat it and the fly says no no i'm not going to come into web i'm not going to come to web again and again but the spider is adamant the spider keeps flattering the fly keeps offering him things you know so finally the fly enters and then the spider eats the fly so this is what happens in the poem will you walk into my parlor said the spider to the fly it is the prettiest little parlor that ever you did spy the way into my parlor is up a winding stair and i have many pretty things to show you when you are there oh no no said the little fly to me to ask me is in vain for who goes up your winding stair can never come down again so it begins by the spider asking the fly to come into its parlor okay to come into its home or its web okay so will you walk into my parlor said the spider to the fly the spider asked the fly if he would like to come to its house it is the prettiest little parlor that ever you did spy so the spider begins to entice the fly begins to you know lure him it is the prettiest little parlor that ever you did spy so the spider says to the fly that my parlor is the prettiest that you will have ever seen my parlor is very beautiful you should come in once okay so this is a very typical way in which people lure us into doing things to bring us our own harm okay they are going to advertise to us in a way that seems very lucrative okay we think that no this is so whenever you know somebody is trying to do something like that it is said in the poem you should use your mind you should think that no there can be something wrong the way into my parlor is up a winding stair okay and i have many pretty things to show you when you are there so this winding stair is such an eerie thing okay it can imply that you know that the place is going to be you know kind of uh, what shall i say the place is going to be kind of eerie the place is going to be kind of hard to come out of because the way into my parlor is up a winding stair okay one can feel already trapped by these words the way into my parlor is up a winding stair and i have many pretty things to show you when you are there okay so you can see how the spider is luring the fly that i'll show you many pretty things when you are once you are there okay but right the fly is not stupid fly is aware that he is luring me so the fly straight away says oh no no said the little fly to ask me is in vain okay don't ask me to come to your parlor i'm not going to come there for who goes up your winding stair can never come down again okay so the fly says no i'm not going to come to your parlor because he knows that earlier also this spider might have hunted down many flies by his words 
he knows that once he is into his parlor he is not going to be come out successfully now the spider doesn't give up i'm sure you must be very dear with soaring up so high will you rest upon my little bed said the spider to the fly there are pretty curtains drawn around the sheets are fine and thin and if you like to rest a while i'll snugly tuck you in oh no no said the little fly for i've often heard it said they never never wake again who sleep upon your bed now this uh, spider again says that you must be very tired of you know flying up so high you can rest upon my bed if you want there are pretty curtains drawn around okay see again he is advertising about his parlor that there are pretty curtains in my parlor okay it should be clear to us that why would somebody call someone so much in spite of so many refusals okay it has to occur to your mind that it's definitely of the advantage to the person who is persuading okay it's definitely of some advantage to the fly or to the spider because he is persuading the fly so much so there are pretty curtains drawn around the sheets are fine and thin okay so you can see how the spider is you know kind of luring the fly the sheets are fine and thin and if you like to rest a while else dugly tuck you in okay this can be a forewarning that i'll kind of you know never let you out i'll snugly tuck you in okay if you want to rest you can come to my parlor oh no no said the little fly for our okay the fly refuses again not those who sleep on your bed may never come out again said the cunning spider to the fly dear friend what shall i do to prove the warm affection i have always felt for you now the spider is trying to make the fly seem guilty that what should i do to make you realize to make you believe that i have always loved you and that i have always you know felt affectionate for you okay what shall i do tell me what shall i do to make you feel that way so the spider is so cunning the spider is you know straight away lying i have within my pantry good store of all that's nice i'm sure you're welcome will you please to take a slice so i have a lot of food in my parlor if you want to you know come you can take a slice of what the food okay of the food or oh, no no said the little fly kind sir that cannot be i've heard what's in your pantry and i do not wish to see okay so the fly says no i know what's in your pantry probably the pantry of the spider contains other flies and other insects that the spider might have killed so the spider says so the fly says that i don't want to come to your parlor okay i know what's there in your pantry okay so you can see the spider is not giving up sweet creature said the spider you are witty and you are wise how handsome are your gauzy wings how brilliant are your eyes and now the fly be- the spider begins to you know praise the fly you know flatter the fly sweet creature you are witty and you are wise tells the fly that you are wise okay the fly knows that he is wise since he is able to refuse the spider and now when the spider himself is saying that the fly feels very flattered how handsome are your gauzy wings how brilliant are your eyes okay so the fly says you look so handsome and you are eyes look brilliant i have a little looking glass upon my parlor shelf if you step in one moment there you shall behold yourself if you want you can come to my parlor and you can see yourself in the mirror that i have in my parlor okay so he praises the fly and asks him to have a look at his beautiful self i thank you gentle sir still now you can see the change in the behavior of the fly in the last three paragraphs he was saying no 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 and now the fly has changed his tone i thank you gentle sir for what you are pleased to say okay the spy the fly is you know getting caught in the snare that this spider has set and bidding you good morning now i'll call another day so she says ki uh, she says that she'll go and uh, she'll come some other day but now the tone has changed she says thank you and she is very pleased by what the spider had to say the spider turned him round about and went into his den for he well, for well he knew the silly fly would soon be back again now mark the word silly okay the spider knows that the fly is kind of trapped into my web and that he'll come back again so he turns into his den he returns to his den so he wove a subtle web in a corner in a little cotton fly and set his table ready to dine upon the fly so he goes into his den weaves a nest okay so he creates a web there and sets his table ready okay might have you know sets his table ready to feed upon to dine upon the fly he knows that the fly is going to get caught okay he knows that the fly is going to come into the parlor and i'm going to eat it the spider is so so clever and so bad then he came out to his door again and merrily did sing come hither hither pretty fly with the pearl and silver wing 
your robes are green and purple there's a crest upon your head your eyes are like the diamond bright but mine are done as lead now the spider is you know demeaning himself in front of the fly to make him feel superior to make him feel more amazing and beautiful okay he using he is using outright flattery you know to his to fulfill his evil plan of eating the fly come hither hither pretty fly with the pearl and silver wing so he is just giving a description of the fly that he is you know silver and pearly in color your robes are green and purple so his wing wings are green and purple in color there's a crest upon your head okay so his antenna is the crest like the crown on his head your eyes are like the diamond bright and your eyes are not bright like the diamond but mine are dull as lead but mine eyes are not bright at all so this is what the spider has to say alas alas how very soon this silly little fly hearing his willy flattering words came slowly fitting by okay so the fly has finally caught in the trap the finally the fly enters the den enters the parlor of the spider with buzzing wings she hung aloft then nearer and nearer drew thinking only of her brilliant eyes and green purple hue thinking only of her crested head poor foolish thing at last up jumped the cunning spider and fiercely held her fast he dragged up her, her up his winding stair and into his dismal den within his little parlor but she never came out again so the fly came nearer and nearer the parlor of the spider okay the fly advanced towards the spider's den thinking only of how beautiful he looked he was only thinking about himself okay he was very flattered he was not thinking about the danger that he was in only thinking about how good i look i must take a look at myself now what happened when he entered the den the spider jumped upon the cunning spider the spider jumped upon the fly and killed him he dragged her up his winding stair into his dismal den within his little parlor but she never came out again so the fly was killed okay and now dear ch- little children who may the story read to idle silly flattering words a play you never get heed now the tone of the poem changes okay instead of telling the story the author directly addresses us and tells us that we should never pay heed to people who are flattering us okay because many a times it might be to their own advantage that they are flattering us and to bring us our own harm and to an evil counselor close heart and ear and eye okay so don't pay heed to anybody whom you think is not right and take a lesson from the tale of the spider and the fly okay and you know we must be you know we must be skeptical about the intentions of such people and we should take a lesson from the tale of the spider and the fly so this was the poem by mary hovet i hope you liked it and if you have any questions you can ask in the comment section below also if you've not subscribed to the channel you can do that right now thank you and bye bye